we played extreme tic-tac-toe every lecture and I still got an A. Okay, so it's pretty chill. If you don't do the readings, I probably won't notice. Hey everyone, welcome to Live from the Lair. So last week I released a sample schedule and a lot of people have been looking at it. Uh, I hope you've all been finding that helpful. Since class enrollment and everything is coming up soon, I decided to make a video with a little bit more detail and kind of explain and walk through the decisions I made regarding class placement. Okay, again, this is a very average schedule. If you were to take the average of all of Berkeley's computer science majors, it would probably look something like this. The loose goal is getting you ready for a software engineering internship, um, like a general software job in the industry. Now, if you know what field you want to work in, that's awesome. Start taking prerequisites on that class track and start upgrading that skill tree, okay? Now, if you're not sure what you want to specialize in, um, you've got plenty of time to decide and internships later on will give you a better idea of what to expect. So you don't really need to stress that out right now, okay? If you don't know what you want to go into, like, that's fine. All right, uh, really quick, we have a live Q&A coming up next week with Bear Pair. Go ahead and drop us a comment and we'll answer it. And again, I'll be giving away a bunch of these stickers. Let's get into it. All right, so I made a copy of the sample schedule um, and we'll go through breaking it down. Now, really quick, if you're FPF, go ahead and just shift everything <laughs> one semester to the right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can still hit Math 1A and S150 AC, but 61A will have to wait until the spring and you can slide it down. If you're EECS, go ahead and add Physics 7A and Physics 7B, I believe. If you're gonna do like the double major, five year masters, if you wanna graduate early or you know like what you wanna go into, you may need to take extra classes each semester. Um, okay, so I just went and left, left that slot there so you can still use that. Really quick, as you can see, I copied all my breath classes into this bar here. Um, so if you're really, really lazy, I, I guess you can take the same risks I took. Um, just change it up a little so it's not obviously copied. I would recommend SPM 50 AC for everyone though. It checks off a lot of boxes. Um, and it also fulfills the AC requirement. So it'll fill off, fulfill like one of the breaths plus the AC requirement, okay? So two birds with one stone. Um, <laughs> we played extreme tic-tac-toe every lecture and I still got an A, okay? So it's pretty chill. If you don't do the readings, like probably won't notice winning. So yeah, freshman fall, even if you're double majoring, you don't explicitly need to stack up that much, okay? Now, let's see. Um, so again, pretty basic, yeah, 61A, Math 1A. So it'll be a pretty busy combo, um, but it's doable. All right, and then here, I would definitely recommend signing up for CSM. Signups for CSM usually go out after the first midterm, okay? So you don't have to worry about that too much from the get-go. Extracurricular factors, uh, it's, again, you're hopefully adjusting to life on campus. So you're getting dorms, like doing your laundry, meal plan, hanging out with friends, maybe exploring the campus, checking out like fun clubs, okay? Um, so yeah, give yourself time. You don't want to overload. That's not super important, all right? Freshman spring, CS 61B, Math 1B. This is, again, a pretty kind of a difficult combo. So if you can place out of these, I personally would. Um, whether or not you want to and what, what you want to do with math, again, up to you. Now, in your freshman spring, you'll usually start looking for apartments, okay? And that does take up time. You'll have to form a housing group. You'll have to look for places. You'll have to sign a lease. Okay, all this weird, like, paperworky stuff that... It does eat up time. It does get kind of stressful. Okay, so it's just something to take into account. Like you definitely don't want to load up anything in your freshman, fall, or spring. CS70 in the summer, that's what I would have done. A lot of people do that. Unfortunately, there is no CSM in the summer. Pretty straightforward. I personally recommend it. The schedule is eight weeks instead of 16 weeks. So it's twice as fast, but you have more time to focus on that one class. That really helps. Again, make sure you have friends because if you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. Extracurricular factors include apartment life, right? So most leases start on June 1st. So you'll probably move into your apartment, have maybe a couple weeks to live there before session C starts. That's where CS70 will take place. You will have to get used to like living in an apartment, going shopping, cooking, running dishes, like things that you didn't have to do because you ate in a dining hall. Okay, so that takes a little bit of time. All right, sophomore year, this is interesting. So this is actually my junior year schedule. If you're sticking to the schedule, you're actually ahead of where I was. Good job to you. I have serious ethical issues with recommending this, although I probably would do it again and the exception would be, I would make sure I'm taking it with friends. This is a pretty difficult combo, although it's the best way to get moving towards like career related classes. In general, people say CS170, CS186, and CS162 are the most useful classes for software engineering. So 170 is very helpful for interviews and a lot of people really recommend it. Um, it's a little bit easier than CS70 in my opinion, okay? And then CS61C is a critical prerequisite for like 161, 162, 164, if you want to take that. So it's not explicitly useful in its own right, but it does unlock a lot of the classes. But it takes up a lot of time. It's pretty busy. When I was taking these together, I would like wake up at like 
eat, eat breakfast, study, 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 eat lunch, study and like work on project and work on homework, study, eat dinner, and hang out a little bit and study more and then go to sleep. Okay, that was not a fun semester, all right? I really don't know what to say. I probably would do it again, although it was not fun. Okay, so I'm really, I'm really gonna emphasize that. Okay, now people call sophomore year, sophomore year, all right, for a lot of reasons. Part of the thrill of being in college kind of dies down. So reality catches up to you. You have to live with apartment mates, which kind of raises issues that you may not have had before. Like, oh, hey, you're not doing your dishes. So all kinds of weird issues that you also have to take into account, okay? Um, sophomore year, also people usually apply to clubs and extracurriculars because they have a little bit of experience. So that makes them eligible, I guess, or qualified. There's usually like interviewing, like projects, all kinds of weird stuff. Okay, I've never joined a club. Uh, well, okay, that's not true. I haven't been super involved in any CS clubs myself, so I don't know too much about that, but I have a general idea that, yeah, people usually apply in their sophomore year. So this is gonna be a pretty busy semester. All right, again, adulting takes time. It's not an easy transition, but you have to do it. Now, spring, again, these are pretty useful classes, databases, CS-186 and cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity is kind of good to know. I actually, it was my second favorite computer science class. Okay, so CS-170 was my favorite. 161 was my second favorite. Um, they both have pretty open-ended projects. Um, CS-170 especially. Okay, sorry, I'm backtracking a little. CS-170, it gives you a very open-ended project that helps a lot for interviews. Okay, it gives you a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, this is a pretty doable combo. I actually burned out super hard in my junior spring when I was taking this combo. Now, if you're not able to find an internship your sophomore year, which is pretty common, I'll explain why in the next video, I would pretty strongly recommend CS169. They just broke it into two classes, so it's kind of weird. This is like more like a traditional like homeworky class, and then 169L is gonna be the project class. If it holds to previous semesters, then you sign up with four friends, you do a Ruby on Rails project, and you basically build software for some client that asks the school for help. Now, I've actually never taken CS169, but I know enough to know that I would really recommend it. Um, first of all, Ruby on Rails is a MVC framework. Okay, that experience is super valuable and that actually opens a lot of doors in terms of like industry and especially your entry level job. Like knowing Ruby on Rails, having MVC and full stack experience, super valuable. Okay, if you don't know what that means, go and hit that subscribe button <laughs> and I'll explain it in the next video, all right? You can also start teaching with CSM. Uh, I personally got a lot out of computer science mentors, so I would strongly recommend joining. CS169 will give you the equivalent experience from like a basic internship, all right? So I would strongly recommend it. Junior fall, CS162 is a very good class to take. You learn a lot. It is a huge amount of work, okay? It's almost akin to like taking like two or three like CS classes at the same time. There's homeworks, projects. It's a complete mess, all right? So I would take this relatively alone. I actually took this combo together as well my senior year. Um, 16A is not a hard class. It eats up a lot of time. If you want to go into EECs or like EE classes, you should probably move this sooner. CS162, you need to take it with friends. So you should have used this previous semester to kind of build up a decent team and find who you work well with. All right. So your junior fall, you'll probably do a lot of applying. Companies start opening up their applications. And then in your junior spring, that's when I had most of my interviews, okay? So I sent in all my apps in the fall and then I did my interviews in January, February. Yeah, and then I heard back from them in March. So I had interviews January, February, and March. All right, that did eat up a lot of time. CS189, great class to take. I've never taken it myself because I am really bad at math. A lot of people like it. If you have time in your schedule, um, you can take like 189 and some of the prereq classes, which I've listed somewhere on the screen. Useful decals to mix in include Ruby on Rails, okay, overlaps with 169. I don't know if the decal will be offered. React, which is a front end, like web development framework, and the web design decal. Now, I think having a personal website really helps. Um, so if you can fit this into your schedule somewhere, would highly recommend it. All right. Um, let's see, later, some later year things. Yeah, again, if you want to take a, all right, so CS Endgame, if you want to take more like operatives or do a double major, now is the time to do it. Um, by then, if you followed the schedule up to around here, you are probably pretty close to being ready to graduate. Um, so you can, yeah, again, you can pick up a minor, graduate early, take a chill semester, really whatever you want to do, all right? But your senior spring, you don't have to take 13 units. You can take one class if you really want to, or you can also graduate early for financial reasons. I hope you found that helpful. We're working on Internships 101. Okay, I'm hoping to drop that within another week or so. So stay tuned for that. Take care. Thank you for all your kind words. I'll see you guys next time.